¿Qué onda amigos de Bericu? Estoy aquí con Mark Jansen de Epica, quienes estarán muy pronto en nuestro país y vamos a platicar sobre Omega y muchas cosas más de la banda. How are you, Mark? I'm uh, doing well, thank you very much. It's a it's a it's an interesting time in the world. This yeah, I know. Time, so so uh, one day it's it's more tough than the other, but uh, I'm trying to get uh, to enjoy the little things in life even more now. I think that's the way you're gonna do it. Just enjoy life and expecting the best for these times we're living right now. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yes, I agree. <laughs> yeah, so just a few days ago, it was the first anniversary of Omega. So what do you think of the album from a distance? It is perfect or now that you listen to it, would you have liked to change something? <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna say about our own album that it's perfect, but uh, <laughs> that's... But it uh, is. <laughs> that, that's for other people. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> If other people say so, I'm very flattered and honored. Uh, myself, when I listen to it, I must say honestly that I really enjoy it as well. Still, after one year, and that uh, I, I told to I talked to Isaac the other day, and I told him also I wouldn't change a thing. Even after one year, I'm still like not changing anything of the album. I'm really proud of it, and uh, I still listen to it myself. That uh, is already a sign because usually uh, when we release an album, I don't listen to it that much. But this album in particular, I every now and then I play it when I'm fitnessing, for example. Yeah, that's amazing. And I think all your <laughs> yeah. fans are, are really happy for it. Thank so you very you much. also did things very fun this time with this album because you revealed the album cover with a little video game for your fans. And I want to know how the idea came up. I also played it. <laughs> Yeah, I played it myself too, and I <laughs> failed the first time. <laughs> yeah, and it was But, so uh, cool, so creative. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, I think it was Kuhn who came up with the idea, the, the keeper player. And uh, okay. yeah, we liked the idea, and then, then there was a first version of the game that was even more difficult. But then nobody could finish the game, and we said, if nobody can finish the game, then it's not fun anymore. Exactly. So let's make it a little bit easier. <laughs> <laughs> and then we made it a little bit easier, but then still some people say it was too difficult. So I think, uh, but yeah, it should, should have should also not be too easy. But when it's too easy, there's no challenge in it. Uh, yeah, I every, know. Every album is, uh, Epic album is also a bit of a challenge. So everybody has to get into it because it's not right away giving all the secrets away. So it, the game also had to be not too easy. <laughs> exactly. So now with this cover reveal, It has a lot of symbols and visual elements. Could you tell me more about the meaning behind it? Yeah, the, we have, uh, for example, two uh, Arabian-like uh, songs on the album. So you see also some elements on the, on the cover, like the, the Ankh. It's an mm -hmm. Egyptian symbol for the, for the transition of life after death. Uh, you see also in, in all these uh, uh, ancient Egyptian uh, buildings that, that, that there's these figures with the, the Ankh. Uh, so this is a very interesting symbol, and uh, so we, I definitely wanted to have that on the album and uh, mm -hmm. cover. The same uh, with uh, there's the it, uh, infinity symbol on the mm -hmm. cover, and when you turn it around, it's also an eight because it's our eight studio album. But uh, so it, yeah, there's a lot of little uh, uh, little details that that have big meanings. So without mm -hmm. giving everything away. But I think that everybody can see these all these little symbols, and when they read the lyrics, you find out why they are on the cover. Exactly. I think it was a very clever way to do it. Yeah, that's also the way I like it. Mm -hmm. the, also, also with the lyrics and with the cover, there always has to be a challenge as well. Mm -hmm. So, when people just want to listen to the music, it's fine too. But when people want to dive deeper into Epica. And then the, the, the real true challenge start to get exactly. to, to get to find out what all the, the details mean. So the other thing as well, uh, this album is basically the end of a trilogy because of the meaning of the previous ones where you're dealing about scientific topics. And I don't know, I want to know what made you decide to incorporate some of quantum physics or quantum elements into these albums. Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, the reason for that is that uh, since I'm a kid, I'm always looking for reasons why things are the way they are in, in life. And uh, from one thing you come to the other. 
And at a certain point, when I started uh, looking into uh, quantum physics, I think it started with the movie, What the Bleep Do We Know? That, okay. um, that movie was, was something released like uh, 20 years ago, I think. I don't know exactly when, but uh, when I saw that movie, I, I got so much hooked by the quantum physics uh, uh, theories in the movie that I wanted to know more about it. And then I started reading more about it. I started finding more things. And then I, I, I decided I should write something about this in the lyrics as well. Because mm -hmm. uh, my personal path in, in life to, to discover things, I always write about them. So when I read my own lyrics from the beginning till now, I see also the path that I've been walking myself throughout all those years. Yeah, and as a difficult topic, it's really cool you're talking about a bit of these elements. Because I yeah. think there are a lot of fans out there wondering a lot of things that are happening in our life and even in space, existence and everything. So I don't know, it's a perfect combination of all. So congrats for that. Yeah, because because many of the, the old ancient wisdoms yep. um, that are written already for so many thousands of years, when you connect them to quantum physics, you it all it's all connected. Exactly. Um, so also what, what happens uh, what exists in the very small also exists in, in the, the largest universe at the same time. So it's all a matter of, of perspective in, in, in the end. So something can be so small and at the same time be huge as the universe. And these things you find out with quantum physics. And uh, yeah, it, it's a topic I can talk about for, for three days in a row, I guess. <laughs> That's amazing. But, uh, <laughs> we'll need to have a beer for that topic. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely. So, I think this album is very cinematic. And what is going to be the challenge of picking the songs you'll perform live during your Latin American tour? Because the live stream was mind blowing. I love it so much. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it's it's very hard always to 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 pick songs for the for the show. But yep. uh, uh, I, what I what I found out is that uh, many people are extremely happy about the songs we played. But there's, there's one song that they say we should play as Code of Life. So I think in the future we will sooner or later start uh, integrating that song as well. Because oh, I can see so it many live. people ask for it. <laughs> yeah, many people want to see it live. And uh, so it will, it will eventually happen, I'm sure. Perfect. So now thanks to this album topic, are you planning like more collabs on movies or video games or maybe talking about anime, releasing a new Attack on Titan EP with the new songs of the last season? <laughs> <laughs> I love anime. Yes. Yeah, yeah, we, we do too. And uh, even though personally I didn't know the series, but then when they uh, mm -hmm. approached us, if we wanted to do this project, I started watching it. And then I thought, yeah, that's really cool. We, uh, we have to do it. And uh, that's uh, everybody of us wanted to do it because it's always like a, uh, a decision we make with all of us. If, if one guy doesn't want to do it, then we would have not done it. But everybody was really into it, like, let's do this. And um, but now this, yeah, this the second uh, one. But uh, I think if we do something again like this, then it will be something different, not not okay. again. Attack on Titan. Uh, okay, maybe yeah, another the, anime or movie video game or something. Yeah, you never know. One, once we were even uh, almost uh, on, on a video game, a uh, very uh, Assassin's Creed. Yeah. Because there was a, 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 a I would say that a competition, mm -hmm. and the winner, the winner would be in the in the game or at least in the promotion of the game. But we were second of, of all the, the competitors. So it was such a pity because we were so close yeah, to uh, winning so close. that competition. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But now talking a little bit about the actual situation with the pandemic, I think yes. there has been more focus on music and album releases, and that's a, a positive thing about it. But since this release, Omega, are you kind of promoting it differently or are you still promoting it the same way as you normally go? No, everything changed, like you say. Yeah, normally we would have done a lot of touring uh, to promote the album and that was not possible this, this time. So we, we decided to focus on the, the Omega Alive, something that we <laughs> would have not done if we would have do a normal tour. So I, 
actually, yeah, the, the, we had to reinvent the wheel because uh, you do it completely different than usually. And I noticed that uh, that our manager, Daniel, in the beginning, he, he had some difficulties with it because, yeah, everything was different than normal. And uh, we were like, OK, it's different. Let's do it then in a different way. But but for some people, it's harder than for other people too, yeah. because when you're so used to do things in a routine way, like you always do, and then suddenly you have to change your whole life, it can be very difficult. And yeah, like, I'm not going to say that everything in this pandemic was easy for me because, uh, yeah, I also had my struggles, obviously. But uh, I also took it a bit of a, as a challenge to see, yeah, this this coming on our path. Let's see how we can tackle the, the problems. And uh, so whenever there's there's a problem, I always want to see how to, to solve it. Mm -hmm. And uh, for me personally, but also for everybody else. Yeah, and, that's the uh, way of doing it. I think so. Yeah, but uh, but yeah, that's that's I, I I cannot solve this problem, of course, for humanity. That that's that's not mm -hmm. possible. But uh, when I discover something, I always want to to share it with with everybody. <laughs> yeah, and and that's the way you we need to do it because we need to make something good for the society in these difficult times, at least. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And now now there's even the war on top of the pandemic. <sighs> So I'm... first you had only the pandemic. Now you have also this war going on. So it's it's a bit of like challenge after challenge at this time. I know but... it's never ending. It's a never ending story. <laughs> <laughs> no, Give us a break, aliens, stay. please. <laughs> oh, that's next. This the alien invasion. <laughs> yeah, I I bet it's gonna happen. <laughs> See you there on <laughs> <For> the abduction. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if we get abducted by aliens, then uh, then. Uh, I cannot get any more crazy than that. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> but now, <laughs> talking about touring, we have a lot of time yeah. restrictions to travel and even for having a vacay. And I cannot imagine how is it as a band. And I don't know, could you tell me your experience and expectations with the inter interaction with your fans after COVID? Yeah, for me, I think it will be a smooth tr transition because uh, Already the last year, I, I gradually uh, went more into starting to hug my friends again. So <laughs> yeah. for me, it's not not so much of a big transition to to play in front of crowd again and to to talk to people. But uh, everybody approached this thing differently, and if people Thanks. till till now kept everybody away, and then suddenly you have to be on the stage and 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 uh, see people. I, I think for some people it can be a shock. I don't know in, in my own band if people if people are like that. I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm more speak like in general. But mm -hmm. for me personally, I, I don't I see it as it will be a smooth transition. Uh, I don't exactly. foresee any any issues with that now. Yeah, we hope to have the, the normal interaction with bands, with yeah. fans, with everybody, because it's really hard to, to just be like having distance with your mask on shows, and it's also very tiring and super yeah. hard to see masks on show, but we'll need to fix yeah. it step by step. <laughs> step by step, yes, yes. Yeah. And also, yeah, this, this mask, yeah, there's some masks that you almost cannot breathe. So I always mm -hmm. pick the one where I have to wear the mask and I at least Take a mask where I can get get at least some some air. Yeah. Uh, probably they are a little bit less safe than some other masks, but uh, for me to to breathe is uh, quite important. So, <laughs> exactly so. <laughs> for all of us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Indeed. But now there's also a thing that that makes me interested of, and it's that Epica have songs from three to fifteen minutes. And how do yeah. you know when a song is finished while writing? Yeah, that's that's a good question too because uh, it's a feeling. So you you never know until you feel it. It's finished. Mm -hmm. And um, actually, on this 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 album Omega, the the Kingdom of Heaven three song was was initially longer even. So we we cut out some parts. We don't want to make a, a long song just to make a long song. Mm -hmm. We we want to make it as long as it feels it needs to be and uh, also this this is a feeling so so, so it can be also too long sometimes and then you throw some stuff out that is not necessary and um, 
but when it feels finished, it, it's it's finished. Uh, in the past, when I didn't when did it, I didn't know yet that I had to listen to this feeling, I sometimes <laughs> continued working, and then the song started getting worse. <laughs> and yeah, then I, I worked for three more days, and the song started to suck. <laughs> then yeah, I found I out. Then I found out I have to listen to my feeling, and then uh, when it feels good, it's done. That's perfect because you start to know in yourself when you're writing and getting inspired yeah. with music and eventually with time and with practice and experience, you know when to stop when you're writing some songs. So exactly. that's so cool of you. <laughs> so you know the feeling as well? Yep. Yeah, I know it. I'm also a copywriter. writer. I don't write songs. I'm a marketer yeah. also besides, besides yes. journalist. But yeah, I know the feeling when, when you need to stop and you have to learn it with the past of the year. So it's very normal when you start um, the writing life. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you learn it because uh, mm -hmm. at a certain point you you find out going on for too long makes things worse. So if you don't learn from it, you start making the same mistake over and over again. Exactly. So you better <laughs> learn from it and and then you know it. And then when it's done, it's done. It's also a good feeling, you know, oh, it's done. Yep. It feels good. Let's not think about it anymore. Exactly, and that's amazing. <laughs> so, after singing Call of Life in Spanish as an acoustic person, have you thought of singing in Spanish? Um, me personally. Yep, yeah, you personally. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I haven't thought about it yet, no. So, but uh, but who knows? You maybe you you planted a seed now. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad I did. I hope so. <laughs> Or at least one line, one uh, sooner or later. It, it, yeah, it's some a line. cool idea. It's a yeah. cool idea. You can get started with something little and then increase it to a whole song in Spanish. That will be amazing. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, first I have to master the Spanish some more. Uh, I'm 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 also getting to learn uh, Italian, and from Italian to Spanish, oh. it's a it's a small step. But first, uh, Italian. First, I have to master the Italian language. Okay, that's cool. So we also know that you're a lover of Mexican culture. So what yes. aspects, what aspects or themes of an ancestral Mexican na nature would you like to address and capture in your music in the future? Yeah, in the future. But yeah, because in the past we already we sang about the Mayan culture, mm -hmm. and uh, that was a big aspect, especially on uh, the album Consigned to Oblivion. And uh, there's many, many things I've learned from that culture. It, uh, it's, it's always known by people who didn't read uh, much about it, like, like they were always sacrificing people to the, to the gods. But there was so much more, so much wisdom in this culture. They, yes. they knew, for example, about the existence of stars that you could not see with the, with the, with the eyes. So they, they must have found ways to explore the universe in a different way that we don't know how they did it. They didn't have the equipment, but they knew about these uh, these constellations, about these exactly. stars. So we have to rediscover how they did it. So I, they must have had some mental uh, constructs, uh, some, some, some pathways that we have uh, forgotten to use. And I think that, uh, that, that, that uh, we can learn a lot from old, uh, the old cultures that were on the earth. So not only the Mayan culture, but also in many other countries in the world, there were beautiful ancient cultures. And um, but like you said, uh, for the future, we uh, we there will also be future themes on albums. But I never think about future themes yet until we start working on a new album. And then <laughs> it's and then it's basically what I'm the books what I'm reading at that moment. They usually become the first themes for the. For the new album and then from one thing leads to another and then I start reading more books in that direction and then yeah then it becomes like an interactive process between the books I read and the lyrics I write documentaries I watch um, uh, yeah it's 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 then a continuous process an unstoppable force <laughs> yeah so I'm very excited to see what you'll bring to the table for next releases and even for your other band Mayan Yes, with Maya and also the, the guys are all already asking me for about one year. When are we starting to work on a new album? <laughs> okay. And, and I'm always like, yeah, you guys can start already. You don't have to wait for me. 
nothing, hap <laughs> nothing happens. <laughs> for for some reason, they are waiting for me to 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 say, okay, now we're gonna start. <laughs> oh, it's amazing. You're all teammates, so it's good to have all the parts involved agreeing agreeing with a new album. So I can understand that them. That's for sure, but 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 I said when you when you want to start, you can already start making mm -hmm. uh, songs or ideas, and then we can uh, later on uh, still as a team uh, work them out. But uh, so far, uh, they haven't started yet. But uh, maybe mm -hmm. uh, maybe soon it will be like uh, I feel like ready also to work on a new Mayan album myself, and then maybe things will go uh, fast forward. <laughs> okay, let's see what's next. And also, as a Mexican, I'm very grateful to have you back in my country. And you've shown so much love to your fans, and it's mutual. And I don't, I want to know you. what do you like the most of Mexico? The most? That's uh, yep. always a very hard question because <laughs> there's so many things what I like. But the most, I think, the warmth of the people. Uh, that's really what touched me the most. Uh, I've been already so many times to Mexico and met so many people and almost without exception, people very warm hearted, very welcoming. And uh, that's what I really uh, enjoy the most of Mexico. Yes. And also, I bet you've tried a lot of traditional dishes. Do you have a favorite one? <laughs> uh, yeah, so every time I come, they, they make me try something else, but I always forget the names because they're <laughs> usually quite complicated names. But uh, but every I, I always try whatever they, they say I have to try and then I eat it. And most of the time I really love it. Sometimes okay. there's something that I say, okay, that uh, that was not really my cup of tea. Mm -hmm. But uh, but in general, the Mexican food is really outstanding. Sometimes yeah, also I'm here at home, it. sometimes here at home, we also eat uh, Mexican food. Uh, Tortillas uh, and uh, tacos. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm, tacos. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's perfect. And do you have anything you want to add to the viewers of Verico and your fans in Mexico? Um, the last thing I want to say is that I really look forward to, uh, in general, already to play, to hit the stage again, but foremost to play in Mexico again and so many shows. So that's something I really look forward to. And uh, uh, yeah, so it has been a, two years without almost any shows, just four shows last year, four festivals. So to finally be able to play and then uh, it's something that, yeah, it feels almost unreal. <laughs> oh, I know, <laughs> but it's finally happening. So let's finally. I have a good feeling about it that it's finally going to yeah, happen. Yeah, me too. <laughs> well, thank you so much, for, Mark, for your time. I hope to see you here in Guadalajara and I hope to say hi. Yeah, let's say hi there. Yeah, <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you, and for you to say. Thank you, bye. Bye-bye.